Greetings Gatehouse Insiders. In this episode, I am meeting with Zabair, who is changing the face of the legal profession when it comes to cultural diversity. We dive deeper into the topics of the bamboo ceiling, the differences between the Western and Asian culture, and what the legal profession should be doing as a whole to promote and cater for the future generations of lawyers. Make sure you subscribe to the Gatehouse Legal Recruitment YouTube channel to catch it all. So I wanted to start with how you became in the, immersed in the world of the legal profession. Well, le uh, the legal profession was something I, I got interested in fairly early, uh, even from school days. And I had my share of uh, watching lawyers in courtroom dramas and you know, in movies and uh, TV shows, etc. Um, and when the time came to decide as to what I wanted to do, uh, following, uh, study at, following school and study at uni, etc., I had narrowed it down to two professions that I wanted to follow and I couldn't make up my mind which one of the two. So being a young idealistic and somewhat naive person at that time uh, and not being able to decide between one or the other, uh, the, when the, the moment of making the final decision came, I tilted towards social work. Um, as I said earlier, being young and naive, I also had dreams of making a difference, uh, changing the world, doing my bit. and. Coming from the background that I come from, I saw poverty everywhere. Um, people were deprived, not only of a good living, just the basic needs. So that was my reason for doing social work. But at the back of my mind, I still had this dream of doing law. Unfortunately, in Pakistan, we didn't have the facility of doing a double degree. If it was there, that would have been ideal for me. So I, I studied social work, and as soon as I finished social work, I enrolled in law as part-time. But you may be surprised to know that when you have limited resources and facilities, you tend to make the most of what you've got. So law school uh, in Lahore, where I come from, uh, had two sessions. There was morning sessions and evening sessions. So you could be a full-time student studying during the day, or you could be working somewhere and come to uni after work, and you could be enrolled as a full-time student doing the normal things. So they made use of the resources and didn't lock up the university after dark and it was still going. And the advantage that had was that uh, other legal professionals, maybe uh, practicing solicitors, barristers, uh, or judges themselves, they had the op opportunity to contribute after hours and we, we had some of the best lecturers who taught us. What year did you come here? Long time. <laughs> that, that probably gives you some idea about my age as well. <laughs> I was 24 and it was 1973. Yeah. So back in 1973, there wouldn't have been many um, lawyers with, I suppose, Asian heritage and background. True. How was it back then? And has it changed or is it still quite similar? Um, through Asian Australian Lawyers Association, we did a study uh, about uh, four years ago. And to our surprise, the number of uh, 
uh, Asian lawyers in uh, higher executive positions, partnership level, judiciary was less than point oh point oh five, and that's an amazingly low number. Uh, we, 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 we were surprised, rather shocked, to see how low the numbers were. Do you think there's a lot of difference between the Western culture and the Asian culture? And if there is difference, what, what is it specifically? Asians generally, that's my observation, I'm excluding the uh, Asian uh, background, children born here, including my children, they're very different to what we were or we are. In a lot of ways we are passive. We don't make a lot of noises, we don't speak up. Um, we don't push our way, we are polite. Uh, one should always be polite, but we are overly polite and we don't stand up, we accept. And that's something that has to change. We should stand up be, and be counted and be seen which we don't do. And as I said, uh, the, the fault isn't on either side, it's both. We sometimes have to lift our game and be seen. And on the other side, people have to realize and provide opportunities and create opportunities and try us out. Uh, we're not asking for favors. We're not asking to be offered positions which we are not capable of doing. But we just want level playing field. That's all we ask for. What should the Western culture be doing to obviously take this into account? Well, um, understanding different cultures is one thing. Um, we, we have some, made some inroads. We have been offered and we've accepted some minor uh, roles in judiciary in the lower level, starting from magistrate's court. Rena Tang himself has not hung around and waited for a position on the bench of the Supreme Court or, high, or, or the county court. He's accepted a position on the VCAT. So we, we're not shy of trying and uh, taking on opportunities to show people that we are capable of doing certain things. There have been two or three appointments during the current government on the uh, magistrate's uh, court uh, bench. Um, there was one Sri Lankan Muslim girl appointed a couple of years ago the first Muslim uh, and first female practicing Muslim appointed. And there was a lot of hoo-ha. Um, it's always the fear of the unknown. And once we get to know people, they are no different. Okay. Asians uh, joke about uh, that themselves. And just like uh, Italians used to be called wogs, and Greeks used to be called wogs, and now they don't mind it. They, they themselves say, I'm, I'm, I'm a wog. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I do. <laughs> and similarly, um, Asians will say, I'm a banana. I'm yellow <laughs> on top, but I'm white inside. <laughs> um, there are positive signs. Um, looking at children who were born here and grown up here. And when I look at them, they have no distinction, no difference. They don't see that I am dark or the other one's white or whatever color, race or background they are. They treat them and they mix 
and make friends equally. Another example I give you, my proudest moment was when my daughter comes home one day and she says, Sophie wants me to go to um, the synagogue with her. It's a Bamiswa. She's finished reading Torah and there's a ceremony and he's asked me. And apparently before that, Sophie had gone to gone home uh, from school one day and said, uh, I want to invite Natasha to my Bamiswa. And the parents for some reason, very concerned that, uh, well, you know, they're Muslims, and coming to the uh, synagogue, they might not like it, or their daughter can come in. Mm -hmm. Natasha might not mind, but the parents might. So they asked Sophie to ask her Natasha direct, so she can go home and ask the parents. And I had no hesitation. I felt very proud see that out of all the children in her class and out of all her friends, Natasha was the only one she wanted to come to Bermiso. And we, I was very happy and very proud of that. We still are mixed with the family, we we, we friends. Um, and uh, this is how it should be. You can't isolate yourself. And as I said, it's a fear of the unknown. You need to know others, expose your children to that. And similarly, whenever there was a start of the school or end of the school term or the year, they have church ceremonies. And my kids will come home and say, Dad, we're having this church uh, ceremony uh, service. Um, and other parents are coming, are you coming with me? And I would go, my wife would go too. Um, I also exposed my kids to learning the Quran. Uh, I wanted to give them the exposure so they know their background and their religious background. I don't force them, I don't impose anything on them. It's then up to them to follow whatever they want to follow. And to me, religion basically teaches you the morals, the way of life, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Muslims or, or Jewish religion, or Buddhism. It's teaching you morals, the way of life. It doesn't make any difference whether somebody says prayers five times a day or goes to church every Sunday. It's the way you live and treat others and behave. That's more important. Why, looking at um, the number of people in the legal profession at senior ranks, why do you think there's not more people of Asian background? Again, it's uh, uh, the Frankly, that they, they, they have been uh, people of Asian background, and I'll give you one example. I didn't know. The first uh, Christmas dinner we had uh, after we formed the Asian, uh, Asian Australian Lawyers Association, we invited Justice Paul Coghlan as our keynote speaker. And if you run into Paul, uh, his honor Paul Coghlan, he's retired now you wouldn't think he's got any Asian background. But he is part Asian. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are some. Uh, the reason why there is, it's, it's the same struggle as the gender uh, diversity took time to sink in. We don't have enough members in parliament of the same background. We don't have Asians in, in the parliament either. I'm talking about the national uh, parliament. Um, and as I said earlier, we are new. I mean, don't forget, I was lucky. Uh, before I came to Australia, my uncle said to me, you, I hear you're trying to go to Australia. Haven't you heard about 
white Australia policy. I hadn't. And lucky I, I was lucky I hadn't heard about it. I would have been discouraged. But I still kept going. So thank you to Gough Whitlam. Uh, if he hadn't uh, uh, ended the white Australia policy, I wouldn't be here today. So if you look back, it's not that long ago that uh, the first Asian migrants started coming to Australia. And we, we have had, uh, through Asian Australian Lawyers Association, we have had meetings with uh, the attorney, uh, the uh, opposition uh, attorney, shadow attorney, uh, John Pesciuto. We've met with uh, the Chief Justice. We've met with uh, the Chief Justice of the newly appointed Chief Justice of the Family Court, uh, who was previously also the Chief Justice of the uh, Commonwealth Circuit Court. And we, we are pushing. We are encouraging to give us a chance uh, for an appointment. We have a slightly different system to UK. In the UK, there's a Judicial Appointments Commission. They appoint. Here, it's very politicized. So it's all political appointments. The attorney decides who uh, gets appointed. Final decision is up to the attorney. And it's some way, way so, somehow it, it is biased as well. So when the Liberals are in government, they will appoint liberal-minded uh, people on the bench. Mm. Labour is the same. Labour will do the same. And therefore, they, there is not much uh, scope or uh, the wider uh, thought of appointing people who are different. And it's also People are comfortable with the, the, what they've got currently. Uh, when we meet with the John Pesciuto or the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, we say, if we walk out now in William Street or Burke Street or Collins Street, look around. The population demographics have changed. And if we uh, don't appoint um, people from Asian background onto the bench. We, we are not representative. We Asians also come before the court, may it be commercial reasons, family law issues. And to be able to understand, we have to have, we must have people on the bench of that background. And hopefully, if we keep chip, chipping on uh, at, uh, and knocking on the doors, hopefully change will come. It will come in time. And we have the patience, and we have the will, and we have the motivation, and we will continue. We are not going to give up. We are not going to go away. I know in the Australian market, there's a lot of focus on gender diversity as opposed to um, cultural diversity. Why do you think there is more of a focus on gender as opposed to cultural? That's interesting and a good question. To a lot of people, diversity stops at gender. Yes. Um, and there have been some inroads made. There's more to come. We are, we are not against gender diversity, but we have to take it further. Beyond that, we have to be inclusive, not exclu exclusive, or not exclude certain race or, or people from certain background. And just as the gender diversity came after many, many years, I still see barristers who say, you know, he was the first one to do this and first one to do that. Um, same way, if we keep at it, it will happen. It will happen. 
I know in America, I think Melina was telling me, she said that they put cultural diversity first and then gender diversity. Yeah. How come we're <laughs> the other way? Um, I, w I was thinking about that on the way here on the train. There is also something to do with our isolation from the rest of the world. Mm. We are way out. And I, I remember people in the past have referred to we are Western culture stuck in Asia. Um, so if, you, if we were part of Europe, it would happen quicker because you have more exposure. Uh, until a few years, we didn't have that exposure. It's increasing. Uh, it is increasing. And we have to plan ahead. Our misfortune is our politicians don't really plan. Knee-jerk reactions are taken uh, without consideration for, of other elements, other issues. There was recent debate that population is exploding. There's a lot bigger in migrant intake. And we haven't even planned for the population, let alone the different races. And the other thing is that people of different backgrounds stand out. We have had a recent debate about uh, the Nigerians and the African gangs. They are no greater than in the general population. But they stand out. They are more seen that way. They are different. Um, so they are our issues. Do you think the media has a lot to do with it? Um, yes, yes, it does. Um, as I said, because they stand out, a big splash on the, on the front page does raise concerns. I'm not saying that there should not be concerns, there should be, but they should not be seen in isolation. Um, crime does happen in, in the community, um, and one thing that surprises me is it, they, it's always uh, it's some, somebody involved in maybe crime. It will always be of uh, African background or Muslim. I mean, what does that have to do with yeah. with the crime or the incident itself? Uh, that should not be the focus. Okay. Um, but because they stand out, it's a big splash on the front page of the papers. Yeah. What do you think? the legal profession should be doing to obviously promote more cultural well, diversity? Uh, we have to plan. Um, uh, we, we have to uh, be inclusive, uh, provide opportunities. Uh, one of the things we've done with the Asian Australian Lawyers Association, we've set up a mentoring program. And we involve judges, barristers, QCs, solicitors to mentor the upcoming generation. We don't make any distinction, but you know, they, we are only catering for the Asian Australian. Even if the connotation might be the Asian Australian lawyers is for only Asians, no it is not. It's for Asians as well as Australians who are sympathetic or have an interest in the Asian culture. So they can be members as well. So we are encouraging our members to be mentored by the senior uh, figures in our profession. And hopefully they'll come to their attention in future uh, and be noticed and uh, considered for appointments. That's one, one thing we've, do we've done. Uh, and that's Australia-wide. You know, with the mentoring program conducted by Asian Australian lawyers is Australia-wide, the four states that we are in. Yeah. Yeah. 
there are, there, there are other considerations we, we are thinking of and uh, implementing. Um, and uh, we, we have to plan ahead. As I said earlier, we don't, don't do the planning in advance. The big blowout in infrastructure now uh, is because we are lacking behind. Um, we don't want to be in the same situation like we've been talking about the uh, train service to Tullamarine Airport. We've been talking for the last 20 years. We shouldn't be in that situation. Okay. And the same for diversity. Diversity means more than just gender diversity. Another episode of Gatehouse Insights draws to an end. But don't worry, I'll be back next week speaking to more incredible people within the legal profession. Thank you for watching, thank you for sharing this video with your friends, and most of all, thank you for following. Mm -hmm.